no man who has taken time to holistically give himself to the word of God has not proved it that it works. The word of God cannot fail because this is the absoluteness of his power. An open invitation to a life in the word. Because you have received the faith of Christ and you have embraced the righteousness of God through faith. Grace and peace are multiplied. That is why we lay hands on the lame and they walk. We lay hands on the blind and they see. We lay hands on the deaf and they hear. It's powerful enough to give you the answer on its first application. Arise on the wings of revelation. Align your destiny. Transform your world. This is Fenero Make Manifest with Apostle Grace Lubega. <laughs> You're not your color, be in San Yusa, Yunisa, your color, you're not your color, be Neunisa, Mulunisa, Yarinyo, Wakarako, Kune.
song of deliverance from my enemies till all my feet are gone. Sing I'm no longer I'm a child of
presence speak to God. Pray like a child of God. Worship like a child of God. Express yourself like the child of God you are. In the lebala lega tala mala lega brode ketelepa. Ere brode ga shamba katala bala lebo zere lebo. Lebo zana lebo kore brade ga shanda la le le lebo. Shi katala brade ga tala le le busta. She cut on Bradega Tala Lelebos. Erebosa Catala Lelebos Satala Nanada. Branda Catala Valerebos Satala Nanada Batala. O Bradega Shambra Catala Valerebos. Rebosi Catala Bradega Tala Lelebos Catala Valerebos. Sombro Coto Coto Coto. E Araba Sombra Cataye Manda Tala Paladi. Era baja kata kata lambra kata lapa, reba zambra kata lapa la de de busa tala lapa, reba santa lapa la de gaza la 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 de bus, rebo se ke tele pran de gaza kata lapa la de bus, reba santa lapa la de bus de 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 bus, si le pro de ke tele pran de bus se ke tele para da na ba, reba santa lapa de gaza la 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 de bus kata. Reba zambra kata la para da de bo si kata. Rebo si karambra de kata la para de bo si de 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 bo raba da kata. Raba zombre kete le para de bo si bro lo boto. Rebo se kete le mamra da kata la para le kata. En talambra de o sala kaya shambra de rebo. Rebo se kete le para de ba zambra da kata la pa. En talambra de kata la le ba zombre ro bo si kata. I sambra de katala malele brodo bosa garapa, raba sambra katala paya da de bosa ketele pa, reba sambra katala pala le bagata, si ele kete, i sambra katala paye brodo bosa le pala de gata, brada gazole bosi katala brodo bosa le bo, raba katala brada katala pala ka brada katala pa, raba sambra ketele bosi katala brada gata. Zile baga tala mambra da gata, rapa tala pa kazamra kata la pa ya la kata, repa zombre kete le pa kata la pa le le kete, rapa zombre kete le pa ya la le kata parada. Emo soyo, shira ba zombra kata, ira pa tala man, izambra dega, zolo poko tala pa, rembre kete le pa ya la, zombre kete le pa na de ba zombra kata la pa. Raba zala pa kaya le man zambre de kete ya la brodo bo bo shira raba zala para de bara raba zambra katala pa la le brade katala pa raba zambra katala pa ya la la brade kete le pa raba zore ba kasha katala pa la le bala la si le banda kata 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 isha brade katala malela da my God I love you ira ma zombre kete le pa kata. 
Ibo si kata la maleka brade kata Ore pa zambra le kata ya lapa Ere bezere makata Isambra de kata la mangre de ketelepa Re pa zarara ba zamba la kata lama Zombre ketelepa ta la kata pa ta la pa kata Zara ba zambra kata kara la 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 lama Zore ba gasha kata ta Ra pa kata pa kata kata Emadna la palata kata la parada Ra pa gasha kata la mamra de kata la Ofre ketele ma zombre ketele pa yata Jile ketele pa na la la mara raba goze ketele pa Raba zada raba goze ketele pa Rebo ze ketele ma rama kata la bradega shakata Reba zanda la paka bradega zambra kata la pa Raba zombre ketele pa la paka la bradega zambra kata la pa Rebo zi kata la bradega kata la pa la kata la bradega zegere pa Shire rebo si katala brade katala ma brade gete Shire rebo si katala brade Raba zala pa katala ma brade katala pa Rebo si katele brada katala pa la pa katala pa Reka zala la ba zambra katala pa la de bazo Raba zombre ketele manda katala pa la de Robo si katala brade katala pa la le pa kata Reba sa katala brade katala pa le bos Imbroto koto koto Shila makasa ka brade kata Riba zambra de katala pa le gezo koropo Repo zo broko si katala pa raba Sombra katala pa la kata brade katala pa la kata Reba sa katala lele ma zo bra katala pa ya laba Shile brodo koko si katala pa la brede ka sambra kata Reka sambra katala pa la ba katala pa E sambra de gara bala de gozi ka pra katala pa Reko sile mala bra de ga zambra katala pa Ra katala bro do gozi katala pa la ta Reka sombra da gaza katala pa Reba zambra de ga sala la 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 le bo si kata Bre teke teke u zombra kata ya I sambra kata E salamba la la le gata Ra pa katala pa Zombra de katala pa Jile bara de ba zombra katala pa Era ma zombra katala pa Zile ba zambra katala pa Reba za katala mbra de gata Jile ketele para da ba zambra de Ra ka sa karamanda Ra pa za katala pa Ra pa la ka mbra de gazara pa Ra la ba gazanda katala pa Reba sa la pa ka mbra de gatala pa Rema zombro koto loko dogo zombro koto Kasha da 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 ba kose kete Shile kele mbra de katala pala de kato E rema zambra katala paya pa kata Rapa zambra de katala para reba zombro do Reba zantala pa katala pa kabra de ka Shile keze bra de ka sakandala pa kata Reba za katambra de katala pa katala pa Raba zombre ke tele pala ko tele para de Robo se ke tele para mbra de gatala pa Riba zanda tala male kata Ishala mbra de gatala pala te katala pa Randa ko ibade Zuko ko tolo pa Esa mbra de gata Shile ke tele mbra de ga Uzo robo so ko to Ishala ma tala mba Re katala mba kata Shila mbra de gata Esa mbra e te Come on, raise your voice. Speak to God. Riba katala man de keteleba. Riba zombre ketele palate. Riba zombre ketele pa. The Bible says the Lord is nigh unto all that call upon Him. To all who call upon Him in truth. Riba tandele ketele pa. God is here. God is here. Shalom rade katala pa. Make it a personal, 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 personal conversation. Ira mada gata lapa, ika malembra de gata. Connect to God. Riba le gata la malendo. Connect to what the Spirit of God is doing. Shile bra de gata la makata. His presence is here. Rata la bra de gata la paka. Kipa kata bata lapa. Oh re bare de le gete le pa. Oh how I love your presence. Oh how I love your presence. Oh how I love your presence. Rabala kamra de gatala pa. 
Ile prade gazambra katalapa katalapa Li pare gatalamandolepa The fragrance of your glory Li palambra de gatapa katalapa In your presence is the fullness of joy Ere bakatalamba tolepa And at your right hand are pleasures forevermore Li palamba gatelepa The God of pleasure The God of peace The God of joy The God of comfort my God of rest, my righteousness. My deliverer. My rock, my fortress, my strength, my shield, my buckler, Riva Kanamada, Zumbra Kata de Kata, the horn of my salvation, my high tower, Repala Makatala Le Bakatolo Brada, Ribala Katale Pale Mande Kate, my ever present help in time of need, Riba Zumbra de Gato, Ele Patata Kata. Ishala mantala pada de daba randa iteke pa shila kapa katalema ropa zela mande telepa shile kebra de katala pa ishala mbra de katala pa shile reba zamra katala pa reba zakata tata rema brada katala pa erema zanda katala pa. Rapatala mambra de gata, sile proroko sayama, e prate katala ma cobra de katala pa, sile paranda gazobra de gata, e la katala ma cobra de katala pa, re pasanta la pala, re katala mbra de gata, re pasanta katala pa, ra la katala manta, ra tala ma kabrada, ra pasala pa kata, ra pa kasombra kata. Repaso predege uso poco tocoto mato poco tolopo i brada gatala manto zimbra de getelema sele telembra de gata recale baya la legata erembra de gatala pa e kele bala de oremba de gata thank you lord jesus thank you lord jesus thank you lord jesus thank you lord jesus Indeed, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. 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 Ratama telepa. Zola bala Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Listen to me before, before you sit. This afternoon, I had an interesting vision, and the Lord impressed it on my heart to pray for a certain kind of people. There are people here by the work of witchcraft, by the work of the occult, by the work of sorcery, were targeted to stagnation the spirit of stagnation and some people's souls were literally arrested they were arrested and tagged to places and things I shall start to bring them the, every demon spirit that was sent through a work of witchcraft 
for stagnation. Anybody whose soul was arrested somewhere by the work of darkness. Right now in the name of Jesus. Start to bring them. Ashes, ashes, bring them. Or if they're able, able men near those people, bring them for me. Try to usher to them. Bring them here. Some people, their souls were tied on, on, on graveyards. Somebody's destiny was tied at a graveyard. Power of the Holy Ghost! Spirit of darkness. Bring them. Bring them in front. Because they're aggressive, so they might hurt people. Start to bring them in front. Put them down. Some people's souls were tied to trees. Some were tied in places. Some I saw some people, somebody, some of you actually, their, their souls were tied next to water bodies and the spirit of stagnation has taken over their life. There is nothing you do. There is nowhere you can go. Every job you start fails. Every investment is dying. Everything you do is dying. The works of your hands are getting frustrated. Power the Holy Ghost! Start to bring them. Bring them, 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 bring them. You spirits of stagnation. They've tied your business. They've tied your marital destiny. You're moving in the same cycle for years. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Bring them up to here. Bring them up to here. The most aggressive, you give them space. Some of them, you can put them that side. You might have to create that space for me. Clear your chairs, you'll put them after. Clear those chairs. Go, you spirit of darkness. Spirits of stagnation, get out in the name of Jesus. Those who are aggressive, you can put them this side. Put them this side. Put them this side. Get out in the name of Jesus. Get out, you spirit. Whatever you ate and it was meant to stagnate you, I command it out of your body. Cough it out. Vomit it out. Spirits of death. Put, put some this side. Put some this side here. And put some on the sides there. Put some there. Those who are to sit this side, don't worry. You'll stand with me. Put some this side. Put some that side as well. You spirits of stagnation, get out! I rebuke you. I set fire on you, on you, on you. In the name of Jesus, I command you to leave God's people. Let go of their feet. Let go of their destiny. Let go of their mind. Let go of their dreams. Let go of their promotion. Let go of their marriages. Let go of their body. Spirit of infirmity. Lose. Push this side, this side, out, this side, this side, this side. You can take it in the back there. In the back, in the back there. You. you put some the other side, push them the other side. Here we are full. Push them behind them. Take them that side. Spirits of stagnation, today you're in trouble. You are in trouble. You have no place with God's people. Every soul that was tied where it's not supposed to be tied. I release you now in the name of Jesus. This side, this side, not no more there. 
put this side. Put that side. Put that side. Put that side. If you run out of space, you can put some in the stream back. Because I see front here is full. The rest you can take them in the extreme corner in, near the white tents behind there. Near the, the, the red car. The, uh, what is that? A fire car? No more in front. Don't bring any more in front. The rest can be taken in the back. Near the, 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 the red that, uh, fire car, the fire truck. There is no one. There is no one. There is no one else like you. Somebody has been coming out of sickness into sickness, out of sickness into sickness, out of sickness into sickness because of the same spirit. They just don't, you're not able to do anything, you're not able to work. Worship Jesus. No one, Jesus, there is no one, darling. There is no one, Jesus, there is no one. I'm Don't bring more any more people in front. We're full here. No one, Jesus, there is no one, darling. There is no Glorious 
enjoy the presence of the Holy Ghost. Those who can walk, they can walk back. Those who cannot, don't force them. You know, somebody can go through things and uh, they think it's normal. They think it's normal. Like this young lady I see with a maroon and white and black. That girl has an attack even in her breasts. Eh? She has, she has some things like cysts have been growing in that young lady's life. In her, in her breasts. God is delivering in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Eh? <laughs> Look at what the devil is doing. Look at what the devil is doing. What you will do, that one, you take her the other side. Carry that one. It wants attention. Apostle, know what? Know what? She's yours. Are you hearing this spirit? Is somebody hearing what it's saying? I can't. So what are you doing here if I can't take her? <laughs> Out! Never should you return. Thank you, Jesus. You're free. <laughs> the devil is a liar. She can even own a vessel and say you're mine. No. 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 The prince of this world has nothing in us. Praise the Lord. Reduce the volume a bit. The prince of this world has nothing in us. That one I told you, carry her away. Just carry her the other side. She'll be fine. Just carry her away. You know, the demons that undress people are very interesting. Put her that side. They've literally undressed her. Thank you, Jesus. The screaming ones, you put them that side. They, they, they have to clear out. They have to clear out in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. How was your week? Okay, greet your immediate neighbor on the left and on the right. Don't fear them. They don't have anything. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm going to repeat this announcement. I know that it was announced earlier, but some of you had not yet arrived. This Sunday, 29th September, we're holding our Sunday services at the Fanero Grounds. Praise the Lord Jesus. Fanero Grounds. Praise the Lord. So, for whatever purposes, this announcement goes out. 
is to ensure, it's to, the end is to ensure that we don't have cases of people asking us, where is the service today? I think you see we've outgrown this. So even that Thursday, we're going to be there because we can't. You can see. Praise the Lord. You can see. But that's a good thing, isn't it? Yeah, God is faithful from one level of glory to another level of glory. Praise the Lord. So as usual, first service starts from 9 to 11. Second service begins from 11 to 1 p.m. And so share that information to everybody you know. We have the global inter-university conference. I've announced that before. Minister Dunson Oyekan is ready. He's excited to be here. Praise the Lord. We've also announced the crusade, ginger crusade. Ginger, ginger, ginger. Eastern Uganda. We are going to see power. Bring every kind. <laughs> You've seen nothing. You're going to see power in ginger. You're going to see the power of God. Raw. Bring the sick, the lame, the deaf, the dead. God wants to change that territory. 18th, 19th, and 20th at the railway grounds. Of course, we need laborers, people who can avail their time. I know some of you, your schedules are hectic, but I'm going to ask you by the masses of God to avail time and come and help serve that side, okay? Because we need as many hands as we can. Praise the Lord. May I bless our offerings. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the generosity of your people. I'm certain that you have always and will always supply all their needs according to your riches in glory in Christ Jesus. And all saints said, are you ready for the word? You ready? Okay, can I have people seated? I see a few movements there in the back. Can we get seated? Because I get di diverted when I, I am seeing people move. Now, today I want to teach a sermon. I hope people in the back can hear me. Can you? You can hear me? Okay. Eh? Those ones I think take down. <laughs> there are some which are, oh, you're taking the extreme back there. And they shout for people in the back. There is enough anointing there to sort it. Say amen. Today, I want to talk about a very integral element. A core element of the Christian faith. Which for most of the part, many people assume to understand but not really as they ought. As they ought. And so today I want to take time to explain it according to truth. And I believe that if you understand this, it will build you to the next level of that intimate relationship that you share with God. What is eternal life? Eternal life is to know the one true God and Jesus Christ whom he has sent. Our primary, primary calling on earth is to know God. And this is one of the most formidable tools, keys, elements. Today I want to talk about worship. 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 And if, if you're writing, the title is, What is Worship? Write that as a question. What is worship? Because some people think worship is singing only. When people come here and they lead us in song, they say, wow, you're a great worshiper. That's a very, very small definition of worship. So today I want to take time and define worship. It 
In Genesis, the 22nd chapter, from about the first verse, you'll allow me to read the story. It came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. Then he said, take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. I'm reading the New King James. Offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son. He split wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar. When he saw that place, verses 5, he said to the young men, which were his servants, stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship, and he, we will come back to you. So then Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son, took the fire in the hand and a knife, and two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to his father and said, my father, he said, here I am, my son. Then he said, look, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. I'll not finish the story. If you find time, you can finish it if you don't know it. But for many of you who know that story, the end of which then was he takes this son at the altar and as he stretches his arm to slay him, God sends, I mean, God opens his eyes and behind him is a ram caught in a thicket by its horn. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it for a burnt offering instead of his son. And he called the name of his place. What was the name of the place? The Lord will provide. Praise the Lord. The Lord will what? Provide. Now, in biblical interpretation, we have principles. We have principles that govern the interpretation of Scripture. Not everything should be interpreted directly as you read it. We have to consider the literal context. We have to consider the cultural context and several other principles that are laid down for us to interpret the Bible. One of which is a fundamental law called the law of first mention the law of first mention. The law of first mention is a principle in biblical hermeneutics that states that the first time a word or concept appears in Scripture, it, set, it tends to set a precedent for how that word or concept will be understood throughout the rest of the Bible. Let me repeat that again. The law of first mention in biblical hermeneutics states that the first time a word or concept appears in scripture, it tends to set a precedent for how that word or concept will be understood throughout the rest of the scripture. In other words, the first mention can serve as a lens through which subsequent occurrences are to be interpreted. So the first time a word is mentioned in the Bible, the first time, it's important to mark it or note it. Take for instance that if I look through the Bible, what was the first time the word grace was mentioned? So I go through the scriptures and when I find that place where the word grace was mentioned, I try to study in which context it was given, Genesis 6, 8, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. If you want to understand the doctrine of grace, 
study the law first mentioned, it will give you the precedence of how it should be understood. And as the law first mentioned helps us understand whatever concept or idea God has introduced us to us at its core, the core foundation. Not that that revelation of first mention in its own is, in it is the only exclusiveness or exclusivity, but that calling by conviction, whatever is picked in that context is for most of the part the spirit that God wants to express in that thought. And the first time worship is mentioned, the word worship is mentioned in Genesis 22. That is why I chose this for the text. But I cannot go into that conversation without firstly defining what worship is. And I'll give you my definition. It's a long one. If you don't write it, don't worry later on. Uh, in your free time when you're listening, you can write it for your notes. But worship is a heartfelt response. This is important. Every worshiper is responding to something, okay? Everybody worshiping is responding to something. So worship is a heartfelt response of reverence, adoration, and devotion to God. Because there has to be a reason why this man reveres God, why this man adores God, why this man has a certain devotion toward God. Because of his nature, number one. Two, because of his actions. Three, because of his word. Four, because of his presence. Five, because of his grace. These are the reasons why we revere him, why we adore him. This sacred act is manifested through a myriad of expressions or a number or several expressions, including heartfelt prayer. So a heartfelt prayer is an act of worship. A joyful praise. When you come here and uh, somebody tells us, let's get to our feet and start praising God, that's an act of worship. It's your response to God. And people think that worship is that time when the songs go slow. When praise at first, then we went into worship. That's the wrong interpretation. Hallelujah. It can come through melodic singing. Somebody can just simply scream. It's an act of praise if it comes out of the word or out of a response to the presence. Some people, you know, make our bululu. You know those, woo! Some blow vuvuzelas. All of that is an act of worship. But also, it involves selfless service. Selfless service. When you say I'm volunteering myself to come and do set up in the church, that is an act of worship. And obedient living. To live an obedient life. The sacrifices of purity because it's a sacrifice. And those are the things you do because you're responding to God. That's called worship. So if I can repeat it, uninterrupted, worship is a heartfelt response of reverence, adoration, and devotion to God because of His nature, actions, word, presence, and grace. 
And this sacred act is manifested through a myriad of expressions, including heartfelt prayer, joyful praise, melodic singing, selfless service, and obedient living. That's worship. That's worship. However, if we go back to the law of first mention, now back to Genesis 22, to give us the story and understand the context in which God preferred to introduce worship to you and I, I want you to look at the circumstances under which Abraham chose to worship God. This man had been barren for most of his life and his wife. They could not have children. And the Bible tells us he's complaining to God. I don't have an heir. And if I cannot get a child in Eliezer, which is my servant, he shall be heir. And then God promises him a child in old age. Him and Sarah. Some of you who have read the Bible know the story. If you haven't, you can go back and refer. Fast forward. After that long, it's more than a hundred years, God tells him, take that one, your only son. Covenants are very powerful things. Those of you who know the scriptures, he had had a son before called Ishmael through with one of the maids called Hagar. But God would not recognize Ishmael, not because he did not love Ishmael like he would love any man, but when he tells, he tells Abraham to take Isaac, his only son, it meant that he was the child recognized of covenant. Take now thy son, thy only son. This is important, especially for covenant practitioners. There's something deep there. Because I've seen people who try to engage God to enter covenants that he is not into. That's for another day though. That is why the scriptures show us, or actually do not show that he consulted Sarah. I don't know that she would take it. Married men understand this. So he went with his son. His only son. The only thing he has been waiting for. I have had an opportunity to pray with people who are barren and they have their children after maybe five or seven or 10 years of marriage or 13 or 15. My God, those children are everything. Everything. Now imagine God is testing this man and he tells him, you see, that thing you call everything, I want it. I want it. This was a test. So he gets his boy, saddles his donkey, and his servants gets to a point and tells his servants, tarry here, I and my lad must go to worship. But number one, nobody with a slave mentality can understand worship. Nobody with a slave mentality. That is why the servants were left back. Only men with covenant can understand worship. Abraham could understand worship because he had a covenant with God. He was a friend of God. Ishmael could be taken as a sacrifice. Or he could join that worship 
because he was a seed of a man who had a covenant. When a man is enslaved in their mind, when a man approaches God like a slave, that man cannot worship right. Remember the scriptures in John, chapter 4, verses 20. Jesus addressing the woman at the well, Samaritan woman. He tells her, give me water. Remember the Jews and the Samaritan, Samaritans had contentions with each other. So, there's a conversation between the master and this woman. To the verse 20, the fourth chapter, the Gospel of St. John, where they bring a conversation of worship. She says that our fathers worshipped in this mountain. And you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. So you see that this was one of the contentions the Samaritans had with the Jews. Where do we worship from? How do you worship? Our fathers told us that this is the mountain to worship from. You Jews say that we are supposed to be worshipping from Jerusalem. There were doctrinal issues. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. He told her, you worship you know not what, or in simpler English, you worship what you don't know. We know that we worship, sorry, but we know the Jews what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. And Jesus profoundly says, the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God, he repeats in 24, is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him, he repeats again, in spirit and in truth. To worship in spirit means to give wholly of your heart. To yield entirely of yourself. He says these people worship me with their mouths or lips, but their hearts are far. In spirit means to worship with all of yourself. Nothing left back, nothing reserved, no hidden or ulterior motive, only to worship in the purity of your conscience. But it also requires the alignment of your person to the laws that govern the spirit realm. It begins with the heart, don't forget. Before we have the conversation of the spiritual realm, we must begin with the state of that man's heart in worship. Because the spirit realm can be quite a very deceptive realm if a man is not founded in truth. This is important. So your heart is key. And number two, your alignment to the laws of the spirit is important. For instance, do you have an understanding of the difference between the true light and the false light? These are discernments of the spirit realm. The Bible says, no marvel, Satan has transformed himself even as an angel of light. Not many people know the difference between the light, the true light, and that false thing called light which comes from darkness. 
And so some, even in their most well-meaning sense, they are deluded. Number two, he says the man must worship him in truth. You must know what the word of God says as you worship him. Remember, I defined worship expressed in different forms. What is the truth touching prayer? Do you have a revelation of prayer? Some people pray wrong. Remember, heartfelt prayer is one of the expressions of worship. But do you understand how to pray through the word? Do you understand praise through truth? Are your songs that you're singing sung in the revelation of present truth? Do you serve according to truth? There's a young man perhaps who joined ushering because he saw a beautiful girl. And he's serving. One, his heart is not in the right place. But two also, by the principles of truth, he's not serving as the word would require him. Some people serve in contention. Some serve in strife. Some serve in competition and comparing themselves with others. Some serve because they are simply poor. The day they get money, we will struggle to have them in church. This thing called obedient living. Do you live according to the truth? Or like the Bible says, you route mischief through some law. You have yielded, the Bible says, to the throne of iniquity. The Bible calls it. This is the place where some people use the Bible to do evil. That's what Psalms 94 verses 20 says. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by a law. You, there are people like that. Who use the word to destroy others? Who use the Bible to break people? Who use the Bible to destroy businesses? and relationships. Who use Bibles to sow discord? The truth. They use the word as the throne of iniquity. Do you understand the doctrines of grace versus law? Do you understand the present truth? If you don't understand these things, you're not yet a worshiper. Are you following child of God? Are you following me? This is very important. Now, the spirit behind Abraham or at work in Abraham, the truth and realities that he knows of God, the faith and trust that he has built in this relationship, leads us to this moment. Where God tells him, I want your only son. Only. Then he says, you know, these servants, they won't understand covenant issues. No servant, can, no slave can slay their child for a God. It takes a higher covenant. Because only sons understand inheritance. If you have not understood the laws that govern inheritance, you have not yet understood the first principles that govern worship. Everything you will be doing as a slave, you will be doing as a, a person who only understands the way of transaction. Your worship will be transactional. 
Your praise will be transactional. Your giving will be transactional. Your service will be conditional because that's the way of slaves. But when we understand the mystery of sonship and the glorious riches of the inheritance of the saints, Ephesians says it. Glorious riches of the inheritance. I repeat that, in the saints. When you understand that inheritance, you serve differently. You pray differently. You worship differently. You give differently. You, you understand things differently. If a parent punished, if, if, if you were a householder and you had a slave with a, who had children, and you had children on your own, and one of the child, children of the slave in the house, uh, and your child, your son, went out and did something wrong. If they came to be punished, and you punished your son with a, with a, alongside the child of the slave, your son will understand you easier than the child of the slave will understand you. Your child might understand the love in the chastisement, the seed of a slave will think you hate them. Am I communicating? So there's various, various dynamics when we compare our relationship with God as of whether we are sons and men under covenant or we come with a slavery mentality and men under transaction or who relate with God on condition. This is a place where the slaves don't go. This is a place where men of covenant, sons go. But two, I want you to think again according to the law first mentioned, that the first time we see worship, God had desired a man's son It is easier to worship God after a victory. But it is harder to worship God when you see imminent destruction. When you see death coming. When you see the future dark and blur. And at that point, the inspiration out of the relationship that this man has with God, draws him to a place of worshiping God. I know people, many people, who no longer come to church because they lost their jobs. They no longer want to serve God because Richard promised to marry them. And after all of those years of waiting for Richard, he disappointed her. What's the reason of going to church? Does God even care? Somebody's even live streaming now. They are thinking, why did I even switch on? Because the relationship is of a slave, not of a son. They have not seen enough of God to understand his love and the covenants. There's somebody who used to attend every service and then they fired them on their job and their children lost fees and they say, what's the point of going to God anymore? Somebody lost it all and after losing it all, they said, what's the point? Worshiping God. If this is what he can give to me, after the years of my sacrifice, what's the point of going to church anymore? So you hear them say, you know, pastor, I'm too stressed and depressed. I can't even pray. Not many have been tested to the extent of giving their own children. 
But I'm talking to that man or woman who received the news that their child is in a mortuary and they would go on their knees and start worshiping God. That's a person who knows God. And they won't judge God foolishly or act out of character. The Bible says that in all this job sinned not, nor judged God foolishly. The moment he was afflicted, he went on the floor, bowed down and worshipped God. That is worship. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of you remember the, the story Of, well, let me first finish something with Abraham. I'll come back. What was he going to tell God? The question ultimately would be, what was he going to tell God when he says, let me and the son go to worship? What was he going to tell God? What was he going to tell God? Have you ever asked yourself that question? I have. What we see in this definition called worship is the face that tells a son who is asking for the sacrifice. The Lord shall provide himself a lamb. The Lord shall provide himself a lamb. So I go through the scriptures, now to where I was supposed to go, and I ask myself the question, when God comes to Joshua, leading the children of Israel, and he tells them, I want you to blow trumpets. Worship me as you go around the city. What is in the mind of these people as they are worshiping God with their trumpets and, and, uh, of, ram, of ram horns? The Bible says for seven days. What, what was in the mind of those people going around the city the first day and nothing is moving? There's imminent danger ahead of them. What was in the mind of those men? Expecting good to come, but the good has not come yet. What was in the mind of Paul and Silas in the prison cells? And the scriptures telling us, while they were in prison, they start singing hymns, praises. These men are in prison. Anything can happen to them. They can, you know, there's a possibility of sentencing them to death. Or you might say, oh, that's not possible because you're in 2024. But imagine somebody's in prison and they're threatened for death. And instead of thinking of how they will leave their children, who will look after their mother, how will their debt be paid, or are their children going to go uh, be taken as servants to pay the debts they have left behind if there were debts. And they're not thinking of anything except praising and worshiping God. What is in the mind, I ask, of such people who have learned to worship God in adversity? And then God draws your attention and tells you, if we're talking about worship, we have to begin here when it doesn't make sense. The king Nebuchadnezzar builds a golden idol. Everybody should worship. Some of you remember the story. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they say we shall not bow 
We can't worship this God. And the Bible tells us they are taken to the king. So you know this guy in his threatening attitude asks them, uh -huh. did I hear that you don't want worship? As if to say, maybe I had wrong or else then go back and do what is right. These guys boldly tell him, we shall not trouble ourselves, we shall not suffer ourselves to answer you in this matter. We shall not. Whether this God comes to save us or he does not save us, it does not matter. Yes, he's able to deliver us from this burning fiery furnace and he'll deliver us. But if, even if he doesn't, <laughs> Do you understand that kind of mindset? Some of us have to die. They say, if it be so that this God wants us to burn, we shall what? Burn. But we shall not bow to you, to this idol. Oh, let me make it simple. That she is in the middle of choosing rent and fees from a fellow who doesn't know God. And she comes from a poor family. And her mother is sick. And this fellow has the money to pay for the mother's what? Treatment. He has the money to take her young brother to school. He has the money to make her forget all the poverty that has existed for four centuries in the family lineage. And she's at that verge. And she tells this person, whether my mother lives or dies, whether my brother goes to school or doesn't, whether I sleep on the road or not. Whether I have a meal to eat or not, I will not give in. <laughs> That's a worshiper. Not <laughs> That's not worship. People in the back say amen. That, that's, that is worship. That is worship. We, when we get to, to crossing the line for me to compromise, it doesn't matter how much you're paying. I'm born again. My no is there? No. If it means coming with old hair, a torn bag, that's okay. Because her best friend chose a Mercedes over God. Packed it somewhere and came and raised her hands and said, And the neighbor's like, hey, you're a nice worshiper. Tell your neighbor, Nga. <laughs> if God doesn't save us, your majesty, it's expedient to know we shall never serve your gods. This is where a worshiper is tested most. That time when you were at your workplace and your friends brought a deal and they say, this thing, eh, we are going to say that this is the money needed, but what you must do is what? You just keep quiet. You'll eat your cut. And then you imagine cart means huh, I can actually buy that land and build that house and also testify. They even tell you, no, all you have to do is just look away. Just, just look away. Look away.
And then you say, you know what? I'm born again. I have come to appreciate that only true worshippers pass tests. Only true worshippers pass tests. I remember back in the day, I was approached twice when I was a banker, twice, by people who wanted to defraud the bank. And they required my services because I was very gifted and smart. And I remember all of those times. That seed in me tells me, how can they even think that you, a son of God, can compromise. I looked at them as poor men. And for honestly, I told them, there is no amount of money by which I can, sell, sell, I can sell the God I serve. That's called worship. Some of our peers chose the smooth road and they went through transactions that were not godly. And I can assure you by God, none is richer than me. And I'm not sorry. Because worship pays. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying? You chose to look away and you were compromised. And after compromise, you came in the presence and lifted those hands. Hey, you're a worshiper. Why don't you join the choir? Are you getting it? The Bible says, better is a little with righteousness than the abundance of possessions if it comes through a wicked way. Now, there is somebody who is not yet driving that car who is not yet living in that house because they chose righteousness. It's little yet because they chose righteousness. He's not as smart because he chose righteousness. She's not living in that house where even people come to capture eh? so-and-so's car. How sorry. Because they chose righteousness. That is a worshiper. That person who chose to forego that pleasure, that addition that could, did not come with righteousness, and they chose the denigration. They chose to be belittled. And some of them, many things have fallen apart. Their finances are expunged, but they still choose God. That's worship. When a man is in the face before a God who seems to want to take more than they are willing to give or able, but they still choose to give without the expectation of anything to come. That's a man who understands worship. Thank God the scriptures have taught us to expect. But if a man can get to a place where he can tell God, even if you never gave me, even if I never saw that good, I would still be willing to sacrifice this. That is the beginning of worship. Let's understand worshipers. So, this thing called worship team, it must end today. You can call them singers, ministers of song, but this thing called worship team, it must end today.
because not every singer. <laughs> He's a worshiper. He seeks for they that worship him in spirit and in truth. To know that I have believed God for marriage for 30 years, 40 years, the man has not yet appeared. But when I know it's Thursday, I'm in that car, I'm on that border border, I'm walking to service. Because it doesn't matter what I have or what I don't have. I could be fired and immediately come from that meeting and go straight to the church and nothing will change my place with God because he's bigger than anything. He's bigger than that job. He's bigger than that man or woman. He's bigger than that relationship. He's bigger than that contract. That is worship. That is worship. Where there is no true place of sacrifice, you cannot have a true worshiper. Some of us, we want to relate with God in convenience. Only when convenience is served. Or when it rains, I cannot go to church. I told a story once. I remember one of those Sundays we were down in the building where we do the meetings on Sundays. It rained so heavy. It should have been last year. It rained so heavy. So heavy. I'd never seen it like that on a Sunday morning when I'm preaching. That day I entered first service and we had about 70% of the people in the church. The 30% had not prayed. And some of the people I know had not prayed, had cars, very expensive cars, very expensive cars. You know those cars that can go anywhere? Some of the people I knew have generators at their home that even if electricity went off, the generator would light itself up and they would have to iron their clothes and come to pray. Some of the people who didn't pray that day, I know for a fact have the most decent meals and the most comfortable beds. And some of them drive from church to their home without meeting a pothole. Oh, it's possible. With God, all things are possible. And there on that Sunday, a little girl comes walking, a young lady. She had come for service. The rain had hit her. <clears throat> she was dripping. Her dress was tied to her body. And I think her, one of her shoes, I think, had even um, broken. Like, uh, I think one of the threads or straps was broken. And she's holding her bag. She's shivering in the rain. And she has shoes in one hand and the bag on the other. And she's holding her dress. And she's walking on that rainy day coming to service. And I thought to myself, what a worship. What a worshiper. And then she enters the church, sits in the back so nobody to notice. And then the programmer that day says, let's welcome the worshipers. To come and lead us in worship. I learned this many years ago in my primary consecration, and I remember the age, it should have been about 18, when I was 18 years old. 
There's a death by which I died in the flesh. And from that day, I knew in my heart, and I'm not saying this as a boastful person, but I'm testifying. That day, I knew in my heart that there was nothing I was not willing to do for God. Some of you, we don't tell our stories. When you see these lights and cameras, you will never know. I remember days we used to go deep in the villages because our primary ministries were in the villages. And you walk six or seven hours to get to the place where you're going to preach for two hours. And then you walk another six. And I remember one of those days we were in a crusade week in Bali. It was raining every day. You walk to go to preach the gospel for six or five hours. Preach door to door for five, for two or three hours, or one or two, three hours. And then you walk back another five or six hours in the rain. And when you get to the crusade ground, you're all soaked. And then you get on the ground and get the microphone and start singing and the microphones go off and you start clapping your hands. But as you're clapping, the, the, just the, the water coming out of your hands even blinds your eyes. Are you hearing me? Because the gospel must be preached. That is where some of us come from. We don't come from places of silver spoons in the mouth. I went to villages in Malaysia, Barrio, Bakelalan. Those village places where you're preaching to old women up to midnight, 1 a.m. in the night, and they don't want to move. Those small little airports, those airfields where even chickens are crossing inside. Because the gospel has to be preached. And the pla those places, you're literally spending all your savings to take the gospel there. Not because they have promised you a big honorarium. That is worship. I remember once we were building a church and the pastor ran out of, <laughs> there was no money. Graduates, fresh graduates. We became potters immediately. What do you need? I want sand from here to there. You push the wheelbarrow. The gospel must be preached at every cost. You fold your degrees and diploma. Remove the shoes and become like any other casual laborer because there is nothing that should not be done for the gospel. When you get to the place where the gospel demands you, forget your degree. Forget the accolades. Forget the credentials. Forget that Obi who look at you and say what happened to you. Because when we get to heaven, it won't matter which school you went to. Budo or Gombe, we're going in that line. Harvard, Yale or Isbat University. That day, it won't be the accent. Whether you speak fluent or it's broken, that day it won't matter. God will understand all languages. Paul is talking about those things. Oh, frequent journeys. In danger often. Danger from robbers. Danger of our own people. In the danger of Gentiles. I remember the times we used to walk 2 a.m., 3 a.m. One time I went to preach in a place where there was no cars to return. <laughs> and after the overnight, we had to walk. Deep, deep in Mukono there, during that time where we used to have night dancers. Something passes, and then you speak in a tongue. Shata gobra, diga zombra katalapa, sile kembro daga talaida. Paul says in hardships, in sleepless nights, in hunger, in thirst, without food, in cold, in exposure, whatever is required, us worship. Us worship. The day my father died, the blood, the body was warm. We prayed for one and a half hours. My brother told me, let's let him go. We had our peace. Immediately, I cleaned those eyes and went to master class. 
taught for two hours. The pain came later. That Thursday, I didn't give an excuse. I was here preaching the gospel. Friday, we buried my father. Saturday, we were in men gather, preaching the gospel. Because when I said yes to God, I gave all of myself. During that time, a man of God heard that I had not missed the meeting. And he told a dear friend, Pastor, and told him, Oh, how that young man loves money. The pastor thought that the reason why I preached those days was because I loved money. You understand this world? But for some of us, to live is Christ. To live is Christ. We don't live for anything. And that's the truth. I'm not boasting. I'm just giving you an example. Because some of you need these examples. We have a generation of young ministers coming up who are not willing to pay the price. They want to serve God in convenience. Everything must be right for them. I'm not going back to church. I'll sit next to somebody with a smelling armpit. And that's a an, that's reason. Why you won't pray? We have sacrificed less. There are young men who died. People who have buried Ali. Whose wives and children were burnt at stake. Because they chose God. Who endure persecutions all through. Some of the bullets that were coming to us, we had the choice of dodging them. We would have simply said no to the calling. We would still go to heaven. You understand? But we chose. We said yes. Some of you must mature. You must really grow up. And understand that the gospel requires your blood and your life. Your blood must be in the gospel. Your life must be in the gospel. That is what we call worship. I learned that early. I learned that early. That whether it's working or not, it's the same. Abiatha lost his mother. One of the boys used to play my piano. He's now in Northern Ireland. Some white girl took him. I remember the day his mother died. Listen, this is important. I remember the day his mother died. I told him, stay home and be with your family. He said, I have to play. After serving God, I'll go and bury my mother. She would want this. And I remember as I was preaching, very people knew. I would turn and look at this young man and he's playing. He's playing the piano. He's playing the piano. And after that service, he got in the car to go for the funeral service and put his mother on the ground because they love God. They love God. There is no greater expression of worship than when God demands so much in a time when you're not able to give it and you still choose to give it. Because God in, by nature is not a taker. Even the things we think he requires of us, they are really tests for our elevation. There's nothing he needs from you. You think he needs your piano? You think he needs my voice? He doesn't need my voice. Even if I didn't worship him, these stones will come up and worship him. But we must understand worship. We must not take lightly when we say, I'm a worshiper at this church. We must be willing to give of ourselves all that God requires, even when we don't see victory or when we've not yet seen the testimonies in our lives. And that heart that is willing not to give up and draw back to perdition. 
because you are a believer. I know of a, a, a young man who used to walk every day for more than 28 kilometers. Comes here, 28 kilometers. He comes in, in Fanero and then he sets up. After setting up, the service goes on. After the end of service, he helps the team assemble the chairs. While those of you who live in Bogolobi are going home and you have cars, he's assembling chairs. And after assembling chairs, by 11, 11 and a half going into midnight when he's sure everything is set, he walks by, back home and he has never begged anybody for transport. I know two other kids who are walking from Nansana. What's that? 10 kilometers? Every, every Thursday, their parent looked for me and said, what did you put in my children? Because even when I denied them transport, they still walked. They come back 11 midnight with dusty feet. They were walking. Why? Because they have to come to Fanero. Those ones don't miss service. We must understand worship. If that's what God requires of me, I should be willing to give it. It's the response of my heart because of the revelation I have toward God. It's the response of my heart because I understand how much I've been loved. It's the response of my heart because I have seen and understood what grace can do. How can a man who has understood grace grace not be willing to give of themselves holy are you following me child of god we must be willing to give even if the when the the victories are not obvious even when we cannot see where it's going but you are convicted that you have a revelation of god that word you have received should drive you to do things that average people don't do. That's what makes some of us. Because we are willing to do things, some of which we don't even want to tell you because we don't want to be misunderstood. And we'll do it again because that's, that's, what, that's how I understand worship. That's how we should understand worship. But also, on the other hand, it's important as well to learn to worship even after your victories or glories. Because we also have a generation of people who forget God when the victory comes. We have those who can go through this pain and, 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 and testation when, when God desires of Isaac, they're willing to give Isaac. But when Isaac becomes a nation, they're not willing to give glory. They always have those old stories. Oh, we used to serve God in our old days. Then what happened to you? When as a young woman, I used to serve God. Then what happened to you? Oh, before I got a job, I used to go to every overnight. Then what happened to you when you got a job? Even the more it's important, actually should be easier for you to worship God. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Should be easier for you to worship God should be easy. What happened in, when, when Moses and the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea? Remember Pharaoh was chasing them. The enemies are behind. The seas before them. They literally look like they are trapped. And some of you have been in those situations where one day you found yourself in this trap. You even gave God promises. God, if you take me out of this, I promise you. I'll go to the ends of the earth for you. The scriptures tell us the moment they crossed over in Exodus 15, the Bible says Moses wrote a song for God. In Judges 5, there's a story of Deborah and Barak, Barak following their victory over Sisera and the Canaanites. Deborah, the prophet is and judge, and Barak sang a song of triumph. 
in 1 Kings chapter 8 after Solomon has successfully constructed the temple and bringing the Ark of the Covenant into it, he offered a prayer of dedication and worship to God. In the early church, if you remember after Peter and John were released from prison, chapter 4, verses 24, they returned to their own fellow believers and the Bible says, and they prayed together, praising God for the victory over persecution. That it's one thing for us to understand the worship in the most trying times, but it's also for us to understand the worship after the victory. That should not be forgotten. That is why we don't take lightly things like tithes and offerings. Soon I'll teach about these things called tithes and fast fruits. People don't understand covenant. The Bible says, honor the Lord with you. You see? Don't just, it's not a transactional thing. It's an expression of honor. Worship the Lord with you. You read your Bible. Honor the Lord with your tithes, with your substance. It's a place of honor. If you can't understand that place of honor, if you can't understand that this is God that I'm giving to, your substances and first fruit. That is why in this ministry, I don't fundraise. I don't tell, oh, you must give. I don't talk about money. You know why I don't talk about money? Because it's supposed to come out of the revelation of the worshiper to give to his God. It's not supposed to be out of necessity. We're not supposed to give grudgingly. We're not supposed to manipulate or force you to give. It has to come from your revelation of God. Out of who he is and what he has done for you. You recognize Some of you here have been given so much, not just money, gifts, graces, talents, that the best you can do is to extend some of that or whatever comes out of that to those who are marginalized, who are not able, or who are not as gifted as you are. It's an act of worship. It's an act of worship. But some of us even forget that when you enter a place of testimony, do not forget to praise him. Do not forget to worship God. How many people are praying because they have problems? When we come out of trouble, we walk out of the prayer life. Until the next time the trouble comes, to give of yourself in the discipline of praying daily, is an act of worship. Let's understand these things. Because if we do not, then we have not yet started the conversation of in spirit and in truth. Let's get to our feet. I have learned by God that the man who has worshipped, who worships God or who expresses himself in the order of a man who trusts in the victories that God will give in spite of not seeing them yet. If a man can get to that level where even in their most trying times they can celebrate and jump and give of themselves wholly to God the same as they would if they had a victory. If a man can get to that equilibrium, that balance, where no circumstance limits your worship, that man has entered the place of worshiping in spirit and in truth. Such are those the Father seeketh. Let's open our mouths and speak to God. Ask him, tell him God, help me be better. 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 Come on, speak to Jesus. And you are all My heart is in 
opportunity to come right now and I pray with you so you can receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior let me say it again if you're there and you've never given your life to Jesus you say pastor as you're speaking I want to give my life to Christ come and we pray for you those who are in the live streaming centers walk in front those who are watching me live in your homes or in your car prepare yourselves for those of you who want to receive Jesus the rest of us let's raise our voices and speak to God you were all, oh, 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 yeah. oh, my heart is dear, my soul. Come, 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 come. You were all, oh, oh, oh. the rest of us speak in other tongues. See, you are worthy. The streaming centers walk in front, those who want to receive Jesus. Lord, we serve our You're all glorious, you are all. Come, 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 come. Oh, yeah, see you all glorious, you are all.
Those of you who are here, just repeat this as after me. And those of you who are streaming in, uh, Manifest Malawi, we see you. And those in the streaming centers, those of you who are watching in your car or your house, you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior this evening, repeat along with us. Say, Lord Jesus, say, I thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for dying for my sins. Thank you for loving me unconditionally. Today, I choose to receive you in my heart as my personal Lord and Savior. I'm born again. Amen. Let me pray with you. Put up your hands. Heavenly Father, you have begun a great work in their lives. You are going to see to accomplishment the day of Christ. Some of you are here and you're sick. Right this very moment, be healed. Be healed. Be healed. That swelling leaves. That sickness leaves. That affliction leaves. That bondage leaves. Get out in Jesus' name. You're free from today in Jesus' name. The rest of us, let's put up our right hands. I decree and I declare you have a great week today. I mean from today. You have a great year. The next years ahead of you are going to be brighter. You're going to do so big for God. Nothing will stop you. Nothing will slow you. You're going to be one of the most distinctive worshippers of your time. The glory of God goes before you. His wisdom goes before you. His peace goes before you. His anointing goes with you. His favor is upon your life more than ever before. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, those of you who have received Christ, walk slowly to that corner. I want to take your phone numbers and your names. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Uh, we want to meet you. We want to help you know what it means to be born again. The best gift you can give yourself, keep coming to church. We have Sunday service, 9 to 11, first service, second service, 11 to 1, okay? God bless you. Now, I have prayed for the sick, okay? If you come to me to pray for you, it won't work because you, you will have canceled what I prayed for. Believe that I've prayed for you and that you've been healed, okay? Believe it. Believe it. The rest of you, see you on Sunday. Oh. Over again, I keep This broadcast was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, please visit our website at www.fenero.org or download the Fenero app to stay up to date with all the ministry programs. The Fenero app is available on both Google Play and Apple App Store. Join our online family, spread the love and follow us on Instagram, Facebook and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Panero, make manifest.